the college, uh, which was called a center for most of its history, was started by an astronomer mm -hmm. by the name of Aidan Meinel. And uh, Aidan came to Tucson uh, in the late 50s to start Kitt Peak Observatory. And so he was the founding director of Kitt Peak. And so he ran Kitt Peak for a while, uh, but once he got it up and going, he was looking for some another challenge. And so he came over to the university and became the, the head of the astronomy department and the head of Stewart Observatory. At about this time, the OSA, the Optical Society of America, came out with a report on needs and optics. And this report was was telling how important it would be for the U.S. to have another place where you could do study and research in optics. And at that time, the only place in the U.S. was uh, the Institute of Optics at the University of, of Rochester. So Aiden got very excited about this, and uh, so he wanted to start an optics institute here. And so he went to the U.S. government to, to get money. He basically looked out his office window and he saw this parking lot across the street, he thought, ah, that's the place for the uh, for optical sciences. So he got the U.S. government to come up with the money to build the center portion of the, of the building, the center building that we have here now. But in 1964, uh, Aiden hired uh, Roland Schack, who was probably most famous for the Schack-Hartman test. And so we kind of decided, well, that's the beginning of optical sciences. You know, Tucson. Uh prides itself as being Optics Valley. If you fly into the airport here, you'll see a banner with the friendly face of our smiling mayor looking at you, pronouncing that Tucson is Optics Valley. And, and it is for a reason. Uh, and that reason is rooted in astronomy. Uh, the astronomical sites go, Arizona is, is among the best in the world. Clear skies, tall mountains, uh, wonderful opportunities to, to do good science. Uh, in common with uh, a number of places in Chile. And this was recognized 100 years ago or so uh, with the uh, founding of Stewart Observatory. And from that small beginning, the optics community has continued to expand and grow within southern Arizona uh, with the foundation uh, of the College of Optical Sciences at, at the U of A on the order of 300 optics-related companies in southern Arizona, from very large to very small, one person. Um, but they're all clustered here, uh, in essence, originally because of the astronomical conditions that prevail here. So it's uh, an international powerhouse for optics writ large. My research group develops technologies, prototype hardware, and helps implement things for production. And we have two optics shops here, soon to have three optics shops, part of the University of Arizona. One is at the College of Optical Sciences, where we do little mirrors, up to four meters. There are a number of tough issues for making giant mirrors, and a number of which people didn't really understand when the mirror lab was being developed. To get a big telescope, you need big mirrors, the big mirrors have to maintain an accurate shape in operation to get good imaging. And they need to do so on the mountain when the wind's blowing and the telescope's pointing around. And so at the mirror laboratory, we've built the ability to make lightweight castings of mirrors that are up to 8.4 meters in diameter. Um, the Magellan telescopes have twin mirrors like this, or the twin Magellan telescopes um, are each 6.5 meter telescopes, and they have these honeycomb lightweight castings. We're currently working on the optics for the giant Magellan telescope, which is a single telescope that will have an array of seven segments, seven pieces, each one of which is 8.4 meters in diameter. And they all use Roger's spin cast technique, and so they're very, they're, they're lightweight and stiff. Now the, the LSST is a very interesting design. It has, on a single piece of glass, there are two mirrors. There's an outer annulus. The, the piece of glass is 8.4 meters in diameter. There's an outer annulus, which is the primary. Light hits this primary, goes up, and um, hits a secondary mirror. And it goes down and hits the same piece of glass, but a different curve in the middle, which we call the tertiary reflector. And then that goes up to the focus. We have two 8-meter machines at the mirror lab. 
One of them's now running the LSST, primary and tertiary. The other one is finishing the first of the GMT segments. And this, we're probably about a half a year from being finished with this. Uh, and as the telescopes continue to get bigger with the development of 25 and 30 meter apertures, one of which of course is going to go in Chile, the resolving power becomes that much, uh, much higher uh, in theory, provided the adaptive optics is built to match. And so there's a vigorous effort to develop uh, innovative kinds of astronomical adaptive optics at Stewart Observatory in Arizona. And that will see a major increase in its power and applicability when it's deployed on the giant Magellan telescope on Cerro Las Campanas. Uh, so Chile will see one of, if not the world's, best, highest powered adaptive optic systems uh, coming online in the order of a few years, maybe a decade from now. Uh, Chile has a, a natural resource, or a great place to um, for telescopes, uh, great conditions for observing. Um, very impressed that you're going to, to Chile to uh, teach uh, some students their optics. Uh, it would be great if they ask you to come back again, or be great if some of them uh, take one or more of our distance learning classes, or maybe one or more of them would come here as a student. Well, I think it's great. I think it's really, really fantastic to interact with other people around the world who have common interests and, and common goals. If we can develop some connections between them and particular people at the University of Arizona, that's something that can live on, okay? And that's, that's really valuable. And so I, I hope that this is the beginning of something that, that can grow and, and sustain.